Advanced Financial Accounting OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to go through a practice problem in OneNote related to a consolidation in which we have a parent-subsidiary relationship. The parent owns a controlling interest, but less than 100% of the subsidiary. Therefore, we'll have a non-controlling interest we're going to have to deal with. The fair value is going to be different from the book value in this. In other words, we're going to have some assets liabilities where the fair value is different than the book value at the point in time that the purchase took place. And then we'll also have goodwill. So we'll have to calculate the goodwill for it. This is going to be as of the end of year one that we'll do this. In other words, the purchase is going to take place basically at the beginning of the year. We'll do the consolidation in essence a year later. That will allow us to look at the equity method that's being calculated for basically the whole time period on the books of the parent for their investment in the subsidiary. Let's get ready to account with advanced financial accounting. Here we are in OneNote. We're going to first take a look at the data for our practice problem. We'll go over all the data at once, and then we're going to go back through it and take pieces of the data as we take a look at each component of this practice problem. P purchased a percentage of S on January 1st, 2000X0. So note that's the beginning of January, January of 2000X0. That's when the purchase took place, P being the parent, S being the subsidiary. Amount purchased, 75%. That then, controlling interest. Non-controlling interest, then 25%. Amount paid, 99000 99000 paid for that 75% interest of S by P. The fair value of non-controlling interest is 33000 So the fair value of the non-controlling interest at the point in time of purchase, 33000 Book value of net assets was uh, 97000 So you can read that book value meaning assets minus liabilities as of the point of the purchase. Or the equity section as of the point of purchase was 97000 So basically the book value of the organization at that point. Then the book value, book and fair value differences. Meaning we had this book value here, assets minus liabilities. Then we're going to go through each asset account and liability account and see if basically the book value is the same as the fair value. And or if there is a difference, if there is a difference, we will have to then account for it with the uh, purchase calculation as well as when we do the consolidation so we're going to say they're all the same except for the fair value of building and equipment was 19,400 higher so that means the building and equipment depreciable assets are $19,400 higher that's going to be in used in our calculation of whether or not there is goodwill involved as well as um Within the consolidation, we'll have to write that up and then we'll have to deal with the depreciation related to it as well because this is going to be causing depreciation. Accumulated depreciation at the point in time of purchase, 27,000 years of depreciation of S um, are going to be 10 years. So we're going to use that to use like a straight line depreciation method of the basically added $19,400 that we're going to have to put on the books and then deal with the depreciation related to it. Then we have the goodwill carrying amount. That means we're going to first calculate the goodwill to see what the goodwill is. And then at the end of the year, we're going to assess whether or not that goodwill has been impaired, getting the carry amount, what it should be, and then see if there's in a, an impairment of goodwill we're going to have to put on the books. Then the consolidation took place on December 2000X0, exactly one year since the purchase. The purchase happened at the beginning of the year. We're going to be doing this consolidation, in essence, the first consolidation, you would think, as of the end of the year. Okay, so first... We will then do our calculation. I put a little hider thing, revealer box here. So we're going to do our calculation of goodwill. And this is going to be the information that we've seen above that's going to be related to this calculation. So we have the book value of S. That's going to be the 97,000. In other words, assets minus liabilities as of the point in time of the purchase. In essence, that 97,000. Then we're going to have the fair value over the book value, meaning the assets that had a fair value that difference than the book value was 19,400 and that came here because there was the equipment that had a fair value greater than the book value of 19,400 if you took the value of the of the organization at a book value and then adjusted for the fair value differences then you'd get the fair value of the organization that you would think would be paid for the organization if a hundred percent of it was purchased but we didn't purchase a hundred percent or p did not they purchased 75 percent so then we have to consider the fair value of the non-controlling interest which is given in the problem if it were not you would say oh, well the fair value of the non-controlling interest would then be you would think uh, 25 percent controlling 75 but they gave us the, the fair value of the non-controlling interest at the 33 
So we're going to say, all right, then the, the 1164 minus the 33 then should be the, the fair value of the controlling interest, 83400 which is what then you would expect to be paid by uh, P for 75% of um, S unless there's something else involved. And at this point, again, I just want to stress this. I want to just stress the fact that you might say, well, what else could be involved? Because if you took the assets minus liabilities and you revalued all the assets and the liabilities to their proper fair value amount, then how is it possible that that 83400 on a free market exchange would not equal the amount that was paid for the goods? And the, and the answer to that is because there might be something on that's not on the books, right? It wasn't on the books in the first place, some like an intangible assets such as goodwill. So th that's the question. Is there goodwill now? So we're going to say the amount paid was 99000 which is greater than now the fair value of the 75%, which would indicate, yes, there was indeed goodwill, that being the 16,000, the 15,600. Now, note that there was something regarding goodwill in terms of the carrying of value that we'll have to deal with. So that means it's the goodwill does not necessarily go down in value uh, unless it is impaired. Then we write it down. So we have to check to see if it's impaired. At the end of the year, we check to see if it's impaired. If it is, then we'll have to adjust the goodwill. All right, scrolling down, the next thing we're going to be considering is the equity method. I'm going to take my little ruler thing down here. So the equity method calculation. So let's consider how we would calculate the equity method. Now, we're not going to be posting these transactions. All we're doing is saying, okay, this is P's trial balance. This is S's trial balance. This is as of the year, the end of the year, the point in time that we're actually consolidating. And we want to think about first, how is P accounting for their investment in S? And then because we have to reverse those accounts. So this, that's going to be this account, the investment in S. And that's going to be this account, the income from S. They're using the equity method in order to account for those. So what we want to do is say, okay, let's see if we can deconstruct these. And we can deconstruct them basically from the year that the consolidation or the time the consolidation took place. Because this is the first year that happened. So that means that we should be able to, to reconstruct both the balance sheet side and the income statement side later in later years we'll be able to reconstruct the income statement side but not the balance sheet as easily because uh you know that's a permanent account so what would happen i mean in the equity method the normal equity method well first they had they had the purchase took place so the investment in s went up by the ninety nine thousand, and then they paid cash of the ninety nine thousand. now that was given to us in the data i didn't bring the little data thing right here for you but that was given to us in the data that's how much was paid so that's what it would go on uh, the books for. That's how much S would originally put the information on the books for. Then typically what would happen is you'd say, all right, well now uh, P had revenue of 37,000. So if they have revenue of 37,000, here's the huge calculator that we whipped out the huge calculator here. That's going to be revenue minus expenses or sales minus the expenses here. That's revenue, not uh, a loss credits beating the debits. So that's going to be our revenue account. So I'm going to say, all right, then let's go ahead and take our percentage of that 37,000 times 0.75, I believe it was. That's going to be our percentage, increasing our asset account by 27,750, uh, increasing the income account by the 27,750. That's normal equity method type stuff. The next normal equity method type thing would be to say, all right, what about the dividends? Dividends involved here. We, we could see the dividends that uh, S issued were 16800 So, And then we're just going to look at the portion of those that went to P, which would be the percentage of the 75%. So 168 times 0.75. That's going to be the 12600 So we're going to say debit cash for the 12600 and credit the investment for the 12600 So that's the normal equity equity method type of stuff that we would expect to see going to scroll down and now we we still see the normal equity method stuff up top and now we're going to see this transaction down below maybe i don't need this ruler i'm just going to leave that up there i don't need it right now so then this is going to be the next component that we're going to be taking care of and that will be related to this item which is kind of a newer item that we have notice that this item is not something that would be included in S's calculation of say for the net income down here, but it is something that's that should be reconciled or recognized as kind of like a an intercompany kind of tra a transaction that's going to be reconciled within the consolidation. So we we need to recognize it if we're going to use that 
format of the equity method, even though it's not recorded by S, because, you know, we basically know about it on P side. So we know about this transaction. So we're tying into basically the consolidated, uh, the consolidated amount, including the consolidation kind of adjustments using the equity method. So we're going to look at this difference, this change that happened here. And we're going to say, okay, there's a building. The building was different. Now that's going to be an asset account. So we're, at, we're not going to, there's nothing affecting really the income statement here. We're looking for the thing that might affect the income statement for our adjustment for the equity method. Cause we're typically thinking of, of allocating our portion of this net income. And, and, and so we're going to say, all right, the, the thing that's going to affect it then is going to be the depreciation on that 19,400. If we say that the books are 19,400 higher, as we will do, we're going to have to have a depreciation on that. And that depreciation is going to affect the net income, which should affect the equity method of our P's investment in S. So we're going to say, all right, this 19,400, and we're just going to straight line it over 10 years divided by 10. That would be the amount of depreciation, the added depreciation we're going to have to record and then we're going to take our percentage of it, 75% of it, and that's going to be our adjustment. So then this account here representing our income in S, which is normally a credit, right? We're decreasing it now by the added expense of depreciation with a debit. And then the investment, the asset account is going down by the same amount of depreciation uh, of, the, of the added uh, depreciable property. So then if we were to add these up, so I'm sorry, let's go to the next one. If I go down, okay, and say, look at the next one, we had goodwill impairment. So this is what we've had thus far, including our depreciation item. And then we have this goodwill impairment we're gonna have to be dealing with. So we did our first calculation up top. You'll recall that calculation where we calculated basically the goodwill comparing the book value you know, to how much we paid. So we paid this amount, the fair value, the controlling interest would equal this. So we said goodwill was 15,600. We're not going to, that's going to be an intangible asset. We're not going to amortize the intangible asset over a useful life like we would with the depreciable asset. What we will do instead is test the goodwill at the end of each year and see whether or not it has been impaired. If it has been impaired, that's when we do our adjustment. So in this case, we say that there's a carrying amount of 3,100. So that means it's going to be impaired. So we're going to have to write it down to 3,100. And what's that going to do then to the income statement over here when we think about our income statement accounts well there's going to be a loss there's going to be an impairment loss which is going to affect basically the income statement so it's not recorded once again by s but we're going to have to deal with it uh in in our in our consolidated equity method so we're going to say all right then it's going to go on the books at 15.6 that's going to be an asset minus the 3100 to write it down to that that's going to be the 12,500 loss in essence that we're going to put on the books during the consolidation times 0.75 percent of that that's going to be the 9375 so the income from s is going to be debited because we're recording in essence a loss decreasing our our account that reflects net income from s and then we're going to decrease the asset account of the investment account by the same amount so now we'll take a look at what we have thus far with the equity method. So if we put all these transactions together, then we're going to say, all right, then the investment in S is going to be all the yellow ones that we have taken a look at. That adds up to the 103,320. And that is looking to be the 103,320 here. So this, this account needs to go to zero at the end of the consolidation. We've now deconstructed it to see how it's built. That will help us to basically dismantle it when we, when we do the consolidation process. And then the income from S, other side income statement, that's going to be that 16,920, which once again, we're going to make zero during the consolidation process. Now we're ready to do the actual consolidation. So we're going to be scrolling down. This is going to be our information. We have the trial balance for P. We've got the trial balance for S. The first step within the consolidation process is, of course, to add them up. So within our consolidation worksheet, we're simply adding up P and S to get to our total column. So now we've got P's books, we've got S's books, and we have the total. They all, of course, tie out, or in other words, debits equal the credits. Now we're going to do our consolidation entries into this section. So this will be including our consolidation entries. We're going to be adding the new entries. We'll always basically add into what's already in this section, this section, then reflecting all consolidation or elimination entries up 
until you know the point that we're working on. So the first one's going to be like the main consolidation entry that um, we, we want to consider. It's going to be one of the, the key ones that we're always going to be looking back on. And so we always want to keep an eye on as well this account and this account those two accounts needing to go to zero at the end of the day now i typically start off with the investment account just basically out of habit because that's the first account i kind of look at uh, but i'm going to leave the number we could do the calculation now but i'm going to leave the calculation so ignore the the number right now we'll come back to it later then we're going to have the the equity section now in essence for s the equity section the 54 the 43 and the 16 8 need to in essence go to zero with this first transaction so that's going to be something that's pretty much standard with this type of transaction and we could just pretty much count on that right so i'm going to say all right there's the 54,000. we're going to be debiting that by the 54,000 to bring it down to zero there's the retained earnings for the 43,000. we're going to be debiting that to bring it down to zero and then we have the dividends there's the dividends of the 16.8 it's a debit balance account therefore we credit it by the 16.8 to bring it down therefore these three accounts common stock retained earnings and dividends for p here here they are reversing or here they are for s here's the total then here we are reversing s's component leaving us in essence with what p had at the beginning so we've already posted that out that's going to be what it looks like then we're going to be considering the income from s and that's this account which we typically will reverse now normally what we do is we just say and we're going to do what we normally do here in other words i'm not going to bring this to zero even though it needs to go to zero at the end of the day what i'm going to do first is is allocate the income that is on s's books and then deal with those differences that are resulting that we talked about earlier with from from the consolidation process so we're going to say all right let's start off this way i'm going to say the thirty-seven thousand uh times 0.75 and, and again, you can think about this different different ways, but we're going to try to keep this a standardized set of ways to do this so that when we push forward, we'll be able to kind of uh, adjust this journal entry uh, in a systematic type of way. So even though there's there's uh, this amount in there, we're going to be debiting it for the 27,750 and then account for the other adjustments that will need to take place to get this down to zero. If we post that, then we, we now have a debit balance in that account of the 10,830 we'll deal with that later then we're going to have the non-controlling interest um in the in a let's do actually this last one first the non-controlling interest uh in the net income this account would typically will typically be the 37,000 times the non-controlling interest 0.25 that's going to be the 9,250 then we're left with this account and this account that we need to account for now we got this account and this account so those two we typically think of assets minus liabilities such as this or i'm sorry let me redo that hold on just a second here such as this and then we're going to break that out for the uh the 2575 breakout non-controlling and controlling interest so if i add that up 23,000 plus 14,000 plus 27,000 plus 17,000 plus 157,000 minus 36,000 minus 15,000 minus 11,000 minus 58,800. That's going to give us the 1172. If I take that 1172 times the non controlling interest times the 0.25, we're going to get then the 293. Now, notice that same 1172. If I take that, I believe it was 1172, I think it was, right? Times the 0.75 then we're going to get this number the 87.9 so that so we can also calculate this equity method over here by taking the bottom half all the blue accounts so let's do that real quick we'll come out to the same number we should unless i mess up the calculation happens every once in a while almost never because i do it so well but sometimes so that minus plus the 43 minus the 16.8 and then I, instead of adding up all these this minus this i'll just take the net income down below so i'm going to say plus the 37,000, the 117. So there's the 1172. And if I take that and multiply it times the 0.75, we're going to get that, that 87.9. Lastly, notice this middle part, this, 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 and this will add up to that same number that you'll recognize 54. So let's say 54,000 
plus the 43,000 minus the 16, 8,000 plus the 27, 7, 5, 0, plus the 9, 2, 5, 0. Once again, that 1172. So this, in essence, is the book value, the assets minus liability or the equity section, which we're allocating out then to this account, 25% non-controlling interest, this account, 75% the controlling interest. Next transaction, if we scroll on down, this is the prior transaction now. And, and by the way, if I, if I post this out, notice I didn't go through every account, I don't think. The non-controlling interest is posted here. The non-controlling interest here is posted down here. So this column represents everything that we've done thus far in terms of the adjustments, in terms of the closing entries. This is going to be the adjusted balance at the end of the day. We're keeping an eye on this number and this number, which need to be zero at some point. Going down to the next item, this is what we just did. It's included in this column over here. And now we're going to include to it the new one that we're going to do. That's going to be this one here. This one's going to have to do with the building and the goodwill that we're going to put on the book. So we recall that uh, we, we, we at the point in time of the consolidation, we said that S's books were the same, meaning these accounts were the same, except for this uh, building and equipment, which was higher by the 19,400. That information we're getting from this data, we pulled this from the data up top, that 19,400. So we're going to say, okay, during the consolidation, S isn't going to record that because we're not making S record that because, you know, they didn't, they didn't really do anything. So, but we need to record that during the consolidation because that took place basically at the purchase. So we're going to say, all right, now during the consolidation, we're going to increase the building by that 19,400. And then also we had goodwill that we paid for during the consoli during the consolidation. We paid more money than the fair value. That means that goodwill must have been on the books. So we're going to put the goodwill on the books. That's going to be another asset. So we'll put those on the books and then we'll recognize the fact that also we're going to have to deal with the fact that now that we put this 194 on the books, we need to depreciate it because that's a depreciable asset. So we'll deal with that in a second. And the goodwill, we need to test whether or not it has been impaired, which in this case it has. And then if it has, then we're going to have to write it down. Now, the other side of this is going to be going to basically the balance sheet accounts broken out between the controlling and non-controlling interest. In other words, controlling interest going to the investment account, non-controlling interest going to the net asset account, as opposed to the two accounts down below in the income statement, non-controlling interest, net income, and income from S. So let's go ahead and break this out. We're going to bring up the trusty calculator here. We're going to say the 19.4 plus the 15.6 times 0.75 that's going to be the 26,250. And if we did that same thing, 19,4 plus the 15,600 times the 0.25, we get the 8,750. So that's going to be our breakout. So the building is going to be increasing. Building is included here. And then the goodwill is included there. Then we got the investment in S. Investment in S here. It's still not down to zero. And we're like, it's still not there. But these two are like the same and opposite. So we're, that seems good. That seems like we're getting close. And then we've got the 8750 here going uh, to the non-controlling interest right in there. And that, of course, all sums up, adds up to zero. Let's see what we have next, next transaction. We're going to be dealing with the depreciation now with as a result of this one. So now we increased the building and the equipment by the 19.4. And as soon as we do that, we say, oh, is there an effect on the income statement somehow from doing that? Because... You know, like, does that affect the income statement? Yeah, it does, because you should. we should depreciate that. Well, how are we going to deal with that? Well, now in the current year, we'll deal with the depreciation, and we'll say, all right, um, it, we're going to call it a 10-year property. So we're going to take that increase of the 19.4. I didn't, I didn't bring over the little section of the data, but we said it was 10-year property up top. If you went and looked at, up top, said it was 10-year property. So this added 19.4. We're going to have to add the depreciation related to it because that didn't wasn't added by S because they didn't have that 19.4 added amount on it. So we're going to take that 19.4 divided by 10 years, and that's going to be depreciation. So I'm going to record the normal depreciation entry, 1,940 and accumulated depreciation. Now we're also going to have to deal with the allocation between the non-controlling and controlling interest. I'll we'll take a look at that later. But for right now, I'm just going to record this, this normal entry. Now, also note, there's a couple different ways you can think about doing this. So you might see the order a little bit different and you might, you know, think about it a little bit different. We'll try to do it a couple different ways so that you could, uh, you could see how you might group these, these transactions together. But this is the normal depreciation entry we're, we're going to add to. So that would make sense to a lot of people that for normal accounting, right? We're going to say, all right, that means the depreciation expense is going to increase by that. And the accumulated depreciation is going to increase by that added amount because we had that added 
uh, building and machinery, which is a depreciable added asset that we had to add the depreciation related to it to it. So now we're going to go down. Here's what we've done thus far. And this is going to be the new one that uh, that we will be dealing with. So we're going to combine some together here. We got the goodwill impairment that we're going to deal with. And uh, then we're going to allocate that goodwill impairment to the investment account and the non-controlling interest accounts. We'll actually allocate out that effect not only for the goodwill impairment, but also the depreciation account up top. So let's think about this one thing at a time. So now we're going to we're going to go into the impairment. Let me pull out my uh, revealer tab. So here it is. So we can reveal this journal entry one journal entry at a time. So give us some suspense because it's more exciting. So now we're going to say the goodwill first is going to be impaired. So the goodwill, if we scroll down, we put on the books for that 15,600. So we put it on the books. Then we tested it at the end of the year to see if it was impaired. We're not amortizing it like yearly or anything because we just need to test for it to see if it's impaired. If it's not impaired, we just leave it there and that's fine. If it is impaired, then we got to write it down. We said it was impaired. So it was impaired. So that means the carrying amount they said now is the 3,100. That means that's what it should be at the end of the day, which means we need to do an adjustment for the difference, which is going to be 15.6 minus the 3100. So we're going to bring it down by that 12,500. Now we put the goodwill on the books as an asset now. So it's on the books up here as an asset. So to bring it down, we've already done it here. So notice this has already been posted. To bring it down then, we're going to have to credit it by that 12,300, which is going to be included uh, in this number here. Uh, you'll see up top that we put the goodwill on the books at the 15.6 now we're going to bring it down by the 12.5 to bring it back down to the carrying amount of the 3001 now where are we going to put the other side well it's going to be some kind of loss we had to write down the asset so it's going to go to some down here as a loss somewhere so we're going to record the loss there's going to be a twelve thousand five hundred dollar loss due to the goodwill impairment so then we're going to say that uh, we have to allocate this out between the investment account and the income from s account as well because we got to deal with this uh with, with regards to the non-controlling and controlling interest the investment in s so what we're going to do is i'm going to i'm going to take both of these at the same time we're going to be considering the 12,500 and the depreciation these are the two things that are affecting on the debit side debiting the uh the income accounts and we have to think about what's going to be the effect on the investment account so i'm going to take the 12.5 plus the 19.4, that's going to be the 31.9. The 31.9, that, well, hold on a second. Do that again. 12.5 plus the 1.940 is going to be the 14.440. So the 14.440 times the 0.75 is going to be the 10.830. So the investment uh, in S, we're going to debit by the 10.830. And the income from S, we're going to credit the 10830 and you can see this was reflected basically in the equity method uh, account so if you if you take a look at the equity transactions you could see it was kind of reflected up there so now we're basically deconstructing those i think if you go up top in the equity transaction it'll be uh two two transactions you know for the portion of the of the 19 and the 125 but you'll be able to deconstruct it you know because we're basically bringing these accounts down to zero which you can see after having posted these is now the case so that's that's what's needed to bring these down to zero and you'll recall up top the the 10,830 is up top so you might just say well i know i just need to you know credit debit this and credit this but but the reason you want to know kind of why so you might end up doing this entry just to say hey i need to bring that down to zero but this is this is the reason and to do that and you want to match this up to the to the equity method to kind of make it work so then the other side, what about the non-controlling interest that we have to deal with, right? There's a controlling interest and a non-controlling interest with regards to those income statement accounts. So we're going to do the same thing for the non-controlling interest. We're going to say, all right, we've got to adjust this too. And that's going to be that 19.4 times, uh, or I'm sorry, 19.4 plus, plus the 12500. Let's do that one more time. 1940 plus the 12500. There we go. And then we'll multiply that times the non-controlling interest, 25%.25. And then we're going to do our adjustment. The non-controlling interest uh, is going to be credited to the 3610Y because notice it's being re represented basically as a debit balance, the non-controlling interest. And we're decreasing it now for these two accounts that are basically expenses for their portion of the expenses. So that this number uh which is which is a debit balance needs to be decreased that's why we're crediting 
the the net income side and then we're debiting the basically the asset side so this account is going to be the other account that is affected up top okay so then lastly we're going to scroll down we, this is all, everything we've done thus far reflected in this column over here we're going to be doing this last transaction and you'll recall that there was accumulated depreciation as of the point of time the consolidation took place at the twenty-seven thousand. now you can actually see that over here because you could see that if we if we took out the trusty calculator we had this is the first year so we could do a do this a little bit more trickily we could say 36,000 minus the depreciation that they recorded this year 9,000 means that at the beginning of of the year there was 27,000 accumulated depreciation so if we were to record this as of one entity we may want to net those out like net these out and then depreciate you know from that point going forward so to do that, we would do this entry. We've seen it in the past. We're going to debit the accumulated depreciation for the accumulated depreciation at the point in time the consolidation took place. In this case, at the beginning of the year, January 2000 X zero, debiting the accumulated depreciation, decreasing it, crediting the building and equipment, decreasing it. So that would have an effect, an impact then, of course, on this account and this account. And so this is where we are at at the end of the day notice this is zero this is zero the equity method basically or the equity accounts in essence re reflect the parent account those are some of your check figures highly recommend working through this uh, in excel so we do have excel worksheets working through problems such as this one uh, highly recommend doing doing those